today uh, we're going to start or uh, a new series oh. which we entitled the first and the second coming of Christ mm. you see that is very important so I hope that you are sharing right now you, you click share because uh, it is also timely because uh, it's December it's Christmas season and we want to bring to you the real message of Christmas yes although we know that Jesus was not born on December okay you, you can never find that in scriptures but the significance is that did Jesus you know was the story of Jesus true yes it happened yes. and we want you to we want to give you the context of that that narrative of that story so you can call some calls this topic the uh, the nativity, nativity of Christ yes. or uh, the birth of Christ mm -hmm. but we want you to see a bigger picture we just we don't want to stick on the uh, the story of his birth but that is very important because that's foundation you you, you know the the purpose of his coming must be uh, emphasized mm -hmm. okay so the thing is this uh, uh, we want you to see a bigger picture that uh, and we do, don't want to, to stay on the story of the nativity or yeah. the birth of Christ we mm -hmm. want to go beyond that okay why do we want to go beyond that because uh, because it's the the nativity is already done okay and it's too common <laughs> yes right and uh, and uh, every year we celebrate uh, christmas uh, people talk about his birth in the manger yeah and uh, which is good yeah except for santa claus <laughs> and uh, the green little creatures grinch the, yeah, I mean the yeah the yeah. The, the assistant yeah, that's of this Christmas is all about yeah <laughs> that's the deceptive part okay and uh, other things okay but but the thing is this every year we used to celebrate uh, the birth of Christ and then also the death of Christ okay what month is that um uh, eight March eight uh, somewhere eight. there okay yeah, somewhere there what do we call that here holy week holy week yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah black friday oh, black yeah. friday was right yeah. so we celebrate the birth mm -hmm. and the death of christ wow. okay every year but it seems uh, the most important part is not his birth and and and, and death but the significance what what has that those events accomplished for us for our benefit okay and the thing is that jesus is coming soon <laughs> okay Indeed. that's very important okay so we want you to be aware we, we want to bring awareness by this series that we entitled the first and the second coming of Christ okay so but we cannot skip the first part which is the birth of Christ so we are going to first tackle the nativity of Christ okay so this uh, part uh, is uh, announced by an angel and mm -hmm. then followed by other angels <laughs> which uh, they they uh, celebrate by singing you know they praise god and so uh i i could say uh, this nativity story in the book of luke chapter 2 is something that was announced by the angels remember angels they came from heaven okay so they know who this Christ that was born 2,000 years ago. Okay, yeah. so let's read that. Let's begin with Luke chapter 2. Okay, beginning from verse 1, it says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Mm. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius, Quirinius was governor of Syria. Yeah. Verse 3, and everyone went to their own town to register verse 4 so joseph also went up from the town of nazareth in galilee to judea to bethlehem to uh, to, to bethlehem the town of david because he belonged to the house and line of david mm -hmm. he went there to register with who mary with mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. a child all right while they were there the time came for the baby to be born so before we continue let's let's first talk about one to five 
okay verses 1 to 5 so you see there was a uh, 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 an issued decree yeah. that everyone must register okay mm -hmm. for a census and so as uh, as we read joseph mary went where to bethlehem okay to the town of david because joseph belonged to the house the line of david so both of them oh. are from that line okay mm. meaning to say from the line of <laughs> judah yeah. Okay, that's why Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. Now, why am I trying to emphasize this? Because some people, some people say that Jesus was not a Jew. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I heard something like this on social media. So I think it's what? about time that we address this. All right. Look, huh? <laughs> the, the, the parents, okay, the stepdad uh, and the mother, okay, they were Jewish. All right, they were okay, so they belong to the tribe of Judah. How can they not be a how can Jesus not be a Jew? Man, come, come on, think about that <laughs> common sense. So, those people who say that Jesus is not a Jew is a liar, yeah, they're lying, they have no proof. You know, they're going to stand on judgment day one day. And, and you see, the, why do they say Jesus is not a Jew? Because they wanted to tell the world that Jesus belonged to their religion. Oh, man. And it's not right. That's not real. Okay, that's not true. Okay, everybody knows, e e even if you don't use the, the scripture, you know that he was born in, where? In Bethlehem. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is was and is a Jew by mm. birth, yeah. physical birth, biological birth, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that's the thing, okay? He's a Jew, he, he, is a, he is an Israeli, okay? All right, so let's continue now. Verse yeah. 6, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, verse 7, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, okay? She wrapped him in clothes, and placed him in a manger mm -hmm. because there was no guest room available for them all right so to those of you who came you went to israel and uh, and visited the place which they call uh, bethlehem okay there was this village there before and uh, it was a hill yeah and then below below that hill is what they call Ephrata. Ephrata, yeah. Ephrata, or in English it means uh, fertility or uh, what does it mean again? <laughs> I forgot. Fertility or uh, pro pro productivity. Uh, what does Ephrata mean again, Siddhar? Fertility. Fruitful. Fruitfulness. Okay, that's just, the right word. Yeah. Fruitfulness. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so, you Ep see... Uh, from Ephrath. That's the word. Yes, Fruit from fruit. the word Ephrath. Okay, so there was this village on top. The last picture that they had, historical picture, was during World War One. But in that village, th there were about, as far as I can remember, uh, about 300 families okay, in Bethlehem. So, so imagine everybody returned home. So so it's a really small yes town. it's a small town it, okay. it was a fence oh. okay and then below that is the Ephrata mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, okay there were uh, everybody went back to register so imagine the people who were already living there plus the people who went home mm. okay there was no room okay and then the, at the same time Mary was about to give birth oh and so there was no room so they have they need to look for what find an a, inn. a place to stay yes, yes it is an inn but the, the, those the inns during that time were actu full. actually they were caves mm. okay they were caves where people can sleep mm -hmm. okay so the thing is that uh, it it doesn't look like our hotels and motels and uh, today no it doesn't look like that in fact the manger is not a stable mm -hmm okay but an underground chamber used for food storage oh. and to keep themselves warm okay again let me elaborate on that this manger is not a stable it's not a shelter for animals it's not a throw or a uh what do you call a feeding throw 
okay it's not an open box for animals to eat from it's not even a, a, a place or a container from which cattle and horses feed no it's not mm. okay so it's an underground chamber so we went to nazareth and in in the you know beneath the house there is a a manger they call it manger it's a cave why because during winter okay uh it's so cold yeah uh, even the the people who lives in the area you know they they, they can feel the coldness uh, of, of winter okay <laughs> so amazing. what do they do they go on the in Shall the manger in an underground chamber with yeah. their ships with their animals, with the animals. so to keep everybody warm mm -hmm. okay and then the, the same place where they store their food mm -hmm. okay it's like a mini refrigerator okay <laughs> so you can preserve your food okay yeah. it's an underground chamber so that's yeah. how it looks like okay mm -hmm. so so now uh let's continue where are we verse 8 and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby okay so so now you can imagine if there is this is the hill the village is there below that is what Ephrata. okay so the shepherds were actually situated in the Ephrata. they they're just below okay and then if you are in the Ephrata, you can see the village up there it's it's really close okay so why are these uh shepherds staying in the ephrata at night you know why because they are guarding their ships and because it's not winter mm -hmm. it's not winter because if it's winter what do they do yeah. they go to the what the manger yeah. to the underground chamber but because it's not winter so therefore it's not december okay it's not <laughs> december so because it's not december so you know the it's not uh, cold so they they're in the, in the fields open. yes in the open and so they're guarding they're, they're maybe they're fellowshipping with other yeah. shepherds and then all of the sudden an angel came okay mm. so now uh Verse 9, an angel of the Lord, okay, while, while the shepherds were guarding the flock at night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified, okay? They were afraid. Verse 10, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Oh, okay. So what what kind of joy is that? Verse eleven. Today, okay. This is what the angel said. Today, in the town of David, <laughs> a savior has been born. He is the Messiah. Okay, savior, Messiah, the same. Okay, it's it's, it's a Jewish term for the Messiah. Messiah. He said. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Now, now listen to this. Who said this? The angel. The angel. From yeah. heaven came down and, 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 uh, and, and appeared to the shepherds who were keeping watch over their flocks at night in Ephrata. Okay? Just below Bethlehem. And, he, and, and, uh, and the angel said, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Lord. Okay, again, what? Lord, Messiah, Savior. Wow. Wow. Verse 12. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Manger. Okay, again, it's not a stable. It is an underground chamber. So, so, so that's the tip, okay? If you find the baby lying in a manger, because that is not a common thing i mean yeah. i mean uh, in a manger where the baby you, you don't give birth in a manger <laughs> yeah okay but that time uh, it's unique why in the manger i'll tell you why because you see every every year where the high priest you know they, in israel they have a passover Okay. Uh, a celebration. Uh, yeah. Uh, During the month of Nisan. Yeah. Pesach. 
Pesach, mm -hmm. okay? It, it's pronounced as Pesach. It's a Passover, okay? And they choose a, a, a spotless lamb. Where does the priest go to, you know, to pick the sacrificial lamb? In a manger. Whoa. Okay? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah, why in a manger? Because it is where those, uh, those spotless animals were gathered mm -hmm. okay they were stored there they, they, they they're there so that when the priests go they examine they check if uh, the that animal doesn't have a worthy. defect yes yeah that's right so, and then after checking that they bring it out and check again at the uh i forgot the place okay but uh, they, they're going to check them again where and then once it's uh it passed the test, then it will be sacrificed. sacrificed. Wow. For the sin offering of Israel. That day, okay, the king, mm. the Messiah, mm. the ultimate sacrifice, okay? Wow. The, the, the sin offering was born on the same spot. Where the sacrificial lambs. In Bethlehem. Yeah. Imagine that. The parallel, yeah, <laughs> but this is not a, a lamb that's <laughs> the from a, a cattle, okay? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Th this is the lamb of God, mm. the perfect sacrifice. Why? Because he must be a human being to represent human beings, okay? So when Jesus died on the cross, he represented mankind, mm. the entire humanity. Why? Because he's perfect, he's 100% human. Okay, so remember this. That's why it's called Son of Man because He is 100% human. He's also called Son of God because He is 100% God. Mm -hmm. But He has to leave His deity, His Godhood in heaven so He can become, become man to walk among us so that He can represent us on the cross. But the difference is this. He had no biological father. Okay? Mary, what, it, what she conceived, yes, <laughs> the child that she conceived is actually from the Holy Spirit. Okay, you, you must read the Bible now. We're, we're taking doing shortcuts now. So, the <laughs> thing is this uh, when, so when Jesus was born, he was born without sin. Mm. Okay, wow, because sin you have to uh, uh, get it, okay? You have to, ano yung mana? You have to inherit, inherit it. Yeah. It was passed down from when from the fathers, it, yeah. okay? Down the line, mm. okay? Including us. Yes, that's why if you read uh, uh, Romans chapter, uh, I think chapter 5 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's there somewhere. Okay, can you check that out? Uh, yeah. It says that even from the time of Abraham to the time of Moses, even up to the present time, all have sinned. Uh, Why? Is it there? Romans 5. Is it, can you read that one? Where? Uh, what verse? Seven? Maybe 12. Yeah. Therefore, just as sin came into the world with one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men. Because all has sinned. Okay. Next. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Okay. Verse 14. Yet death Rain. reigned from Adam, Adam to, Moses. to Moses. Even over those who whose sinning was, was not, not like the transgression of Adam, Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Okay, so, so on and so forth. So we will not continue with that. So the thing is that even in the Old Testament, from the first man, Adam, okay, because sin started with Adam and Eve, mm. okay, because they cannot pay for their sins, so the sin was passed down the line, okay? So uh, they ate from the fruit of good and evil, evil. so they have... Just obeying God. Yes, so the, the, the sons... Who were the two sons? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, one is good and one is evil. Okay, from the fruit of good and evil. So you understand it's the fruit and the sin that was passed down from generation to generation until today because it was passed through fathers. But Jesus was not born through a biological father. So that makes him the, sinless. The, sinless, right? <laughs> He's sinless, all right? Wow. So continue now to verse 13. So I, I, uh, at least you have the background. Verse 13, it says, um, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, okay, with the angel who made that announcement. 
mm. and said, uh, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom His favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come on, let's, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they mm. knew that God sent an angel to announce to them, to tell them about the birth of the Messiah, Messiah the, Savior. And the, the Savior, and the Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 16, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Mm -hmm. Okay. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. Meaning to say, they evangelized. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good news. Yes. They spread the good news Correct. all around. So I hope uh, all of you who just heard the gospel for the first time, and maybe some of you uh, uh, refreshing uh, refreshers uh, <laughs> course. <laughs> course. <laughs> you know what? Share the word. Yeah. Okay. Just like what these uh, shepherds, shepherds did. did, okay? So verse 18, it says, And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Amazing. All right. So that's good news, right? So what do you think? Wow. About Luke chapter 2. Man, I think we're having fun. Yeah. I hope, And I hope maybe this is your first time hearing all of this. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you think about Christmas all about gifts and Santa. Uh -huh. well well this is the greatest <laughs> gift ever Boy, okay yeah the greatest gift of all mm. is Jesus yeah he was given by God He's, he was sent to die in our place and remember this everything that had happened in the Old Testament were just a typification Okay, of what is to come. It's like a shadow, so we know that when the real thing comes, you have an understanding. What yeah. do I mean by that? Remember Abraham, he was told by God, mm -hmm. Abraham, give me the one you love. Oh, Isaac. Uh, oh, yes, Isaac. Okay, but you know, he, and, and he was given instruction, go to this place, go to this mountain called Moriah, and offer your son there. Oh. Okay, and then they went. And they, they, he told his servants, stay here, okay, while me and my son will worship, and then we will return. Mm -hmm. But actually, in his mind, he cannot tell his wife what he was about to do, what God told him, because I believe the wife, the mother of Isaac, will not, post, yes, will not allow it, okay? Because they've been waiting, and now he has the son, and his only son, and uh, Sarah... Sarah gave birth to Isaac when she was old. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that's right. He was a miracle child. A miracle child, and then you're gonna kill it. <laughs> so you see, there's a big problem if, if the mother or if the wife Sarah would you know know that. So so they went went up to Moriah. Mm -hmm. They traveled, went up to Moriah, and and if you read the story, it's in Genesis. What chapter is that? I forgot. But here's the thing. The, the the place where 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 Abraham uh, offered his son Isaac, and you know the story, the Lord sent an angel and said, "Stop, don't do it." Okay, yeah. um, because it it's a typification, so so that Abraham would understand or would know that Jesus will be sent, and we will be offered. As a sacrificial offering okay and but the thing is this remember the place it's called Moriah whoa it's called Moriah all right so if you look back in the Old Testament yeah. the Bible says that the first sin was com that was committed is in the middle of the garden Mm. Okay, the, there were two trees in the middle of the garden, the, the tree of the knowledge of good, and evil. of good and evil and the tree of life. Yeah. Okay, now going back to, uh, to, to Abraham and Isaac, it's the same place. Uh, that's in Genesis 22. If yes, you we were in Israel. 
Yeah, we yeah, all right. We were in Israel and our guide told us that there were four streams underneath where we were standing. Mm. That is why uh, there was the sweetheart. <laughs> I forgot again. Call a friend. There was a place there where Hezekiah dug, uh, and there is a stream underneath that he hid during a war. Where was that place again? Is she there? No, she ain't. Okay, so. Hezekiah's tunnel. Uh, what was that? Six. Maybe that's the, the term. So anyway, can you try to search that? <laughs> okay, so we were there and they said th there was the stream. That's why until today, okay, there is a stream flowing there. Hezekiah's tunnel. Yeah, and Hezekiah's Sil tunnel. So Siloam tunnel. Siloam, yeah. The Siloam, you see, on top there is a pool. Mm. Used to the pool where where the blind was, uh, oh, the Lord yeah. opened the eyes of the blind. Yeah. So down the tunnel going up, but there is a four streams. Our guide told us. Okay. So now I am, I am not well uh, versed with that. With geography. Yes, but it seems like uh, the 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 garden before the Garden of Eden is right there. Also, in Moriah. Was, yes. <laughs> and underneath Moriah, <laughs> Interesting. there is a flow of water going four streams, four directions. Mm. Amazing. Okay. So I said, whoa. So when we were in Israel, the, the, the scripture that we were reading, the letters were like coming to life. Now it makes sense. Mm. Okay. So later, listen, remember the word Moriah. Okay. <laughs> so Moriah. let's now go to Matthew chapter 2. I hope you're learning a lot, guys, because uh, this is something you just don't, you cannot learn anywhere, okay? <laughs> maybe yeah. you can learn this in a, in a Jewish, uh, maybe in a Bible, Bible school, study. okay? Uh, yeah, Bible oh, yeah, school. maybe Bible study too. But it's different when you walk where Jesus walked or when you... Where you're there, yeah. where it happened. <laughs> yes, yes, because now you're seeing it, said, whoa, so it's real, okay? So anyway, let's go to Matthew <laughs> chapter 2. Matthew 2. Verse 1. Uh, you like to read it? Alright. So after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi mm -hmm. from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? Mm -hmm. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Mm -hmm. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed mm -hmm. and all Jerusalem with him. Mm -hmm. When he when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. Now in verse 5, in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Israel. Wow! Okay, so again, uh, this is uh, the same with uh, Luke chapter 2, mm. but now we're reading in Matthew chapter 2. Another perspective? Yes. Another gospel. So. The other angle. <laughs> okay, because the, 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 the Luke chapter 2 talks about the angel announcing the good news to the shepherds who were watching their flock, the flock. Okay, mm -hmm. but this at this point, this is from the angle of the king of the king of King Herod, <laughs> who was told about uh, the the star. Yeah. Okay, that points to the birth to, to to Bethlehem. Now look, this is not a star like a a sun that that you know that was pulled to the earth because it's <laughs> gonna burn all of all of us, <laughs> all of them. Okay, during the time, but. Just imagine there. There's a significant star up there with this with strong light. spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Amazing. So where? But but the, the the place is huge. So the king asked, "Where? What's that again? Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews?" So remember this. They were expecting the priests, the, the, the religious people, the teachers of the law. They knew about the prophecy mm -hmm. that there's going to be a Messiah, King of the Jews, who's going to be born in Bethlehem. in Bethlehem. Wow. Okay. So, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, okay, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, 
for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So remember this. The angel said, uh, good news. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a baby was born. He was born what? As a, a Messiah. Yeah, Savior, Lord. Savior, Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now, King of the Jews. Wow. And then, King who will rule. Okay, he says, uh, will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Mm, that's Micah 5 2. Yes. So, uh, let's read Micah 5 2. <clears throat> But you, okay, remember, this is where the teachers of the law, the priests, uh, are quoting from, okay? Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it says, But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Wow. What do you what do we mean by that? It means that before he was born, he was already there. <laughs> he already existed from ancient times. When you say you cannot you don't know. I mean it's he, he already is he he's alive. Dead, yeah. <laughs> he, he existed before he was born. Wow. <laughs> okay? But the thing is this. Listen. Though you are small among the clans of what? Judah Jesus is a Jew. Huh. Ahem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jesus is a Jew. He cannot have other religions. Okay. Yeah. But the real one. Okay. Now I'm not going to talk about that. But the real one is the one that his father established even during the time of Adam. Remember his sons, they, they have this altar. The, the other one offered God the uh, okay, uh, vegetables, vegetables, okay? The other one, the lamb, okay? So, okay, that's another story. But the thing is that uh, it's a worship of a monotheistic God, okay? Mm -hmm. That there's only one God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, going back to our story, this, this was the prophecy about the birth, the nativity of the Christ. He's not just a savior, he's a king. Wow. He's a ruler. Okay? Besides from being the Messiah, the savior, he's Lord, he is king, and he's the ruler of Israel. Meaning to say, he's the right one. He's the one that we're waiting for. Oh, yes. Because all the governments on planet Earth, you know, is corrupt. <laughs> I'm telling you that. Yeah. Okay? You can vote for a new leader. You know, corruption is... I'm not saying that the, the, the top yeah. leadership is corrupt. Yeah. Okay? I'm not declaring that. <laughs> what am I trying to say is this. Is that the system, mm. okay? The political system, okay, is corrupt. That's why corruption in every country, there is, there is no true uh, integrity, no righteousness. There's... Okay, it's a mess. It is. When Jesus comes, when the, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings will come and establish His millennial kingdom, listen to this, that will be the only time or the beginning where we are going to experience real peace. Okay, He's the Prince of Peace. Yeah. And righteousness in the government. Mm. I like the song of Paul Wilbur. And of, and of his... And that? of the increase. And of the increase of... Of your government. Your government. There shall be no end. Mm. How? But, okay, remember, let's go back <laughs> to our topic because... Uh, We're getting a little bit excited yes, there. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> so, the thing is that uh, this prophecy, Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Yeah. Okay. It's fulfilled already. In Matthew 2. In Matthew 2 and in Luke chapter 2. Yep. It happened around 2,000 years ago. Okay? So Jesus was born. <clears throat> and guess what? Israel or the, the Hebrews or mm -hmm. the Jewish people missed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not all. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Not yeah. all. Yeah. But the, some of the people in Israel, in the modern Israel right now, uh, I think 80% are secular Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, 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 meaning to say they're not religious, they're not 
you know they're they're in the middle okay yeah. the religious group they are the uh, men in black okay <laughs> the more than pharisees and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the other wing uh, anyway i'm not gonna talk about politics <coughs> yeah but the thing is this i want you to understand that uh, the bible everything written in the bible okay some came to pass mm. and some are about to happen oh and ever since okay the old testament from generation to generation the bible it, you can really say that it's flawless mm. okay that things happen according to what is written in the book yeah that's why i want you to take heed i want you to take it seriously the scriptures because what's what the, the bible predicts what the bible prophesies about today and the future is all also written until the end you know who will win in the end what's gonna happen it's all in the bible yes okay so but that is not our topic but i hope you are going to uh follow through by you know uh, join us again next week by the way <laughs> don't you now <laughs> yeah <laughs> because uh you don't miss the the series okay because uh we start with the birth of christ and we will end up with the second coming of christ wow. uh, i'm not gonna talk about i'm not going to focus on rapture oh. because the rapture will happen but we don't know when Okay, it's mm -hmm. very clear in scriptures. Jesus said, no one Nobody, knows. Yeah. Not even, not even the, him, not, not even the angels. Yes, correct. Only the Father yes. knows. Yes, so how can we know? Okay, so, so but, let us so not... stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss that. Yes, all right. All right, so you can also read Acts chapter 1 verse 7. So you, if you want to add from Matthew 24 that no one knows, Acts 1 7. Okay, it is not for you to know the mm. dates and the times not so. our business it's none of our business okay <laughs> our business is to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom just like the shepherds did yes correct <clears throat> so this is why we're having this series because we believe this is important jesus said in matthew 24 14 he said nation. and the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached in, uh, into all the nations as a witness yeah. and then the end will come mm. that is our business it's not computing when would jesus come to take us to himself no no, no, no. <laughs> we cannot know okay so i guess uh, if you say i know jesus is gonna come on this uh, year etc that's <laughs> false teaching because it's yeah. either jesus is wrong or you are wrong mm -hmm. okay and jesus said no one knows yeah how how can you be right okay jesus said he's gonna come on the time where no one when you do no you least expect you don't expect it so yeah. if you're expecting him on that very day then he's not gonna come on that day <laughs> because you're expecting it and jesus said when no one expects it wow <clears throat> so you we need to be ready at any time mm, okay anytime. But we must not preach this. Jesus is going to come on this, on this day, on this day, before. This. No. Look. Focus on the task. Okay? Yeah. Let God be God. Mm. Give God the, the right to choose when He's going to come again. Okay? All right. <laughs> okay. So if you ask me, wh wh do I know when Jesus is going to come? Uh, uh, my answer is uh, yes and no. Uh, no, because Jesus said no one knows, mm -hmm. but yes, because Jesus said only the Father knows. So, when will Jesus come? When the Father says it's time. Okay, then he will come. All right. So. Wow. <laughs> so, Short that's answer it. for a long debated <laughs> question. <laughs> that's right. So, it is very clear in the scriptures that we read to you that the Lord Jesus was born king. Mm -hmm. and he was born lord mm. and he was born savior or messiah and he was born ruler who will shepherd israel yep okay so that is the story of christmas that is the context of the nativity of the birth of christ okay it's the birth of the king the birth of the sin offering all right where again in mount moriah what so we go back <laughs> we told you a while ago moriah the place the center the garden of eden okay because our uh, our guide when he 
told us about the four streams underneath, uh, even in the, uh, what tunnel is that again? Uh, Ezekiah's, Ezekiah's tunnel. tunnel. And he also, uh, he told us that, and at the same time, if you look at the map, the, the ancient name of that mountain where the the iron uh, the dome yeah. dome what was the, what we call it is that yes it's a dome the temple used oh, to be okay. yeah yeah the dome of the rock I think that's the name right yeah. so it's the it's Mount Moriah okay let let me uh, if you can try to imagine this is Mount of Olives and then there's a valley and going up Mount Moriah, wow. Valley again, and then Mount Zion. Oh. So we have three main mountains in a place where God said, this is mine. Okay. So, so the thing is that if you're standing on Mount of Olives, you look down below on Mount Moriah, you will see the Golden Gate, mm. which they closed because... <laughs> Because another, they, another that's story. another <laughs> historical story. They closed it because they don't want the Messiah of the Jews to come. Um, that's why they closed it. That's okay. Scared. Okay. So, so now uh, facing that, meaning to say, you're standing on Mount of Olives. Remember, Mount of Olives is where Jesus was arrested. Mm. It was the last place where he was taken by uh, into the hands of the authorities to be crucified. And it is the same place where Jesus will come back. Whoa. And when he touched down. You know what happened in Israel on October 7? That's going to happen again and again. I tell you. Because the prophecy says, if you're a Jew, you're watching me right now. You read Zechariah chapter 12. And I tell you, it's the last one. The last October 7. It's not going to be October 7. But the, the thing that happened in October 7 in a that. bigger scale Whoa. will happen in Jerusalem. Take note of that. That is in Zechariah chapter 12. But this is good news. <laughs> that time, you will no longer need America to rescue you, to give you the armaments, the, the yeah, ammunition. No, 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 no. Because someone will touch down on Mount oh. of Olives. Wow. <laughs> That's Yeshua HaMashiach. Your king, Jesus, the one you pierced, will touch down on Mount of Olives. Zechariah chapter 12. Your assignment. By the way, we're going to tackle on that in the Few, coming yeah. in the uh, lessons. Week. Yeah. I hope next week. But it's a long oh, one. But okay. Okay. No, but this is a series. It's going to be fun. Okay. It's, it's from the what? From the uh, birth yeah. to the, the coming. second coming. Okay. The first coming and the second coming of Christ. That's our series. All right. Yes. So my point is this. So now, where was the Messiah crucified? I will tell you. Okay, let's fuse it. Mm -hmm. He cannot be crucified inside Jerusalem. Because people who were crucified are, are, are considered accursed. Mm. So when the Roman Empire, they crucify people, they do it outside. Okay. Outside Jerusalem. And guess what? Guess what? Jesus was crucified in Moriah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> just the parallel the yes. Bible makes. It's just amazing. Yes. So it's parallel from Genesis, from Adam, the first, the fall of man, the uh, where the sin was first committed to the time Cain of Abel. Uh, Cain and Abel, and then the time of uh, Abraham. You know, Abraham, yeah, Abraham. Uh, sacrificing, sacrificing Isaac. Uh, Isaac. And then to the very time where the prophecy was fulfilled, it's on Moriah. The same place. Same place. But the, the, here's the thing. Because it was, uh, uh, there is a wall. It's fence, the, the city of Jerusalem. So, so the crucifixion, crucifixion must happen outside. Mm. And at the tip, the northern tip, northern part of Moriah, that is where they crucified Yeshua. Wow. In fact, they crucified a lot of people long before that. The rebels, those. Why in that place also? Because the northern part of Moriah, they have a place. What do we call this place? Uh, it's a place. I don't have it here. Let me see. Well, it's not here. 
<laughs> but but that place is a road going to Damascus. Oh. Okay. So in modern days, it's a place where a bus station. Ah. Okay, the bus station. So meaning say everyone who's gonna travel out of Jerusalem, going into Jerusalem, goes there. As you pass that road, you will see those people who were crucified. So you will not follow oh. those rebels. That's the point. That's why they want to 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 display the people that they crucified so that people will not you know that people will how you know will be afraid of the roman authorities and they will submit and not become rebels like them it's a ba basically a warning that yes. says don't be a criminal or you will be like those people yes you will end up in that uh, uh, in in that place so you will be crucified so ah. so so you understand now in that place at the at the northern part of Moriah outside just beyond the wall just beyond the northern wall of jerusalem is what we call the skull the place of skull because that is where death happens people mm. been okay and because there is also a a the the hill looks like a skull oh yeah yeah okay <laughs> but right now it's deteriorated skull because uh, a lot of uh, debris have yeah. fallen okay so but the thing is d during those days it looks it really looks like a skull that's why it's called a skull it has three names skull golgotha calvary northern moriah wow okay so look at this so this is a place called skull or golgotha this is the northern wall so just beyond the wall is the golgotha and farther north of golgotha is what we call the garden tomb okay you can research that search that in the internet the garden tomb or you see in that cemetery cemetery mm -hmm. okay if if they are from the archaeological point of view they found the bones a lot of bones were there except for one uh burial site uh which is uh, not a common one doesn't look like a common because it's from a rich man Oh. But there were no bones, no remains there. In fact, that tomb was not uh, for the one who was buried there. Because the one, okay, be, you know, these rich people, before they die, okay, they have their tomb prepared. Mm. So, according to their size. <laughs> okay. Okay. But you see, the, this rich man, he, he took the body of Jesus okay and place it in his tomb and because jesus was taller than him so they have to chisel okay <laughs> <laughs> the wall they, they have to chisel so that the, so that the legs yes <laughs> you have to go visit israel and go to the <laughs> garden tomb so i i don't need to explain more okay <laughs> but it's so interesting that they said he is not here there is a word that he is not here why because, because he is risen yes he's risen from the dead amazing what you read in scriptures it becomes a reality in israel okay so again <clears throat> so at, beyond the northern city wall you find golgotha the skull the place called skull and uh, farther beyond that in the next 100 meters mm. okay from the skull which is what we call uh, the garden tomb where Jesus was buried where Jesus rose from the dead mm. wow it's amazing right so by the way why are we telling you that because we just want to tell you that there is a proof that it really did happen but the stone okay the real stone that that they used to to seal the the, the 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 opening of the tomb you will not find it because the angel <laughs> okay <laughs> removed it okay yeah. uh, you know the story but I, we're not going to read the story to you anymore but uh, we, we because we want to focus that they also found the 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 rod that they used to seal off the yeah the seal yeah but of course uh, the the metal was 
eaten by the rust bacteria and all the stuff. But the thing is that they was, really tried to seal yeah. the the stone that, yeah. that covers the opening of the tomb so oh. that nobody, no disciple can steal <laughs> the body of Jesus. And it's and that's what happened. No disciples <laughs> stole the body. Yes, of course. Because it was something else. <laughs> Someone <laughs> something else destroyed the 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 rolling stone <laughs> which was sealed which was sealed wow it was so powerful that the guards lost their their, their strength they they just collapsed <laughs> okay so anyway so the question now friends is this okay here's the main question the grand question we know that Jesus died, he, he was buried, rose from the dead, and He's coming back. And when, when the King returns, He will defeat all the nations that are against Him. The enemies of God, those who hate God, He is going to defeat them all. Yes. He's going to wipe them out. Very quickly. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen what, for a long time. For a long time, or two days. No, no. Very quickly. Okay, so you, you need to follow our, our series. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, everyone who are against Israel, against his people, against his land, okay, they will all be defeated. Okay? And the Lord is going to save everyone who are under his lordship, who, those who belong to him. Now, here's the grand question. When he comes, when Jesus comes, okay, will he be a savior to you or will you be his enemy? Mm. He's gonna come, is he gonna come to save you or he's gonna come to destroy you? Think about that. Okay, so, so now, if you're not sure, then you are not saved. You don't understand the gospel of Christ. So how can you believe in Christ if you don't understand the gospel of Christ? Yeah. How can you be saved? You're not saved. No salvation, you know, without the gospel. Because Bible says, the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, I am not ashamed, ashamed of, of the, the gospel. gospel of Christ because it is the, what? Power. The power of God to save those who, who believe. Believes. So how can you believe if you don't know the gospel? So if you don't know the gospel, you are not saved yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we are giving you this opportunity to give your life to Jesus. So the question now is, have you ever committed your life to Him as your Lord and Savior? If you don't remember a time where you gave your life to Jesus, then this could be the time. Yeah. We want to give you that opportunity, okay, it's to submit your life to Him. Alright? No, there's one more scripture we want to read yeah. before we lead you into uh, the prayer of salvation. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. So you understand that you really need to confess because when you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, you 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 believe because that's coming from your heart. Mm. Okay, so you will be justified. The the Lord on Judgment Day will say, "Well, this person is what acquitted from sin. Wow. You're sinless. You're free. You're made righteous in Christ. Why? Because you believe in what He did for you." You cannot save yourself. We cannot save ourselves. We need a Savior. So if we believe in what Jesus did, He was sent as a sin offering. He died for us. Meaning to say, it's a substitutionary death. Mm. He became our substitute. Instead of us dying for our sins, He died for our sins. He took the blame. Okay? 
He took the blame and nailed it to the cross hmm. so that through Him, we can obtain, we can receive salvation. Yes. Okay, that is how simple it is. Just believe. believe. Repent and believe. Lord, I cannot save myself. I need a Savior. And now we just read to you the nativity of Christ or the birth of Christ. He was born what? Sinless. He was born Savior. sinless and He was born a Savior. Messiah. Messiah. The Lord. The Lord. The King. The King. The Ruler. <laughs> and is coming back. He is. So, friends, ladies and gentlemen, maybe to some of you, this is the first time you heard this. You really need to give your life to Jesus. Commit your life to Jesus and say, Lord, now I understand. I repent from my sin. I will follow you. I confess, okay, with my mouth, okay, that Jesus is Lord over my life. Okay, if you want your name to be written in the book of life, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want, you want uh, to, to be saved, you want to receive salvation, this is the only way. Okay, let me read again. Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Because if you believe that he was, he has risen from the dead, he was resurrected, you see, you believe in this one Lord who was raised from the dead. Why? Because the transaction for our sin was already paid. Yeah. It was completed. Mm -hmm. Okay, when he died in the cross, a sinless person uh, representing humanity. Okay, you know what? He died, but he cannot be kept in the grave. He cannot be kept in the grave. Why? Because he is sinless. Amazing. <laughs> and so the father, okay, rose him from the dead because uh, transaction is finished. It's complete. It's paid for. So yeah. where do we go? To the Savior, to the Messiah. And what did the Messiah said? He said, you must be born again. Mm. Okay? Don't look for religion. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one goes to the Father, meaning to say, no one can transact his salvation to the Father except through me, John through Jesus, John 14, right? So the point is that Jesus did not say, join that religion, join that church. <laughs> that is the way, that way, this way, the, what way? No, he said, I, he is the way. So salvation is found in a person. Not in religion, not in buildings, not in whatever. Okay? So, if, any, if somebody tells you, join a religion, join a religion, you will say, that is false doctrine. <clears throat> yeah. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, the Savior Himself huh. said, I am the way. So, He is the way. Because if you say that your religion can save anyone, guess what? Then all the disciples of Jesus are lost. Why? Because those disciples of Jesus never heard about our religion today. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. But Jesus said, He is the way. Mm -mm. It is through Him. Okay? So, you have to confess. That's the, that's the thing. You must declare. You have to confess your, with, you, with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, so you'll be saved. Okay, so let's do that, all right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I'm ready. I hope you're ready too. Okay, so right now, if you want to give your life to Jesus, now you realize that no one is safe because the Bible says everyone was born enemies of the cross. Why are we enemies of the cross? Because we, are, we were born sinners. sinners. Why are we born sinners? Because from the time of what again? Adam. Adam to the time of Moses, even and to the, all the, way to the present <laughs> time, okay? All of us have sinned. Yeah. One sin qualifies us to hell. So, oh. so what's the point? So we're lost. We cannot save ourselves. So all are sinners. And we need but a savior. We need a savior. So God knew about this, but because God loves us, He sent a what? His only Son. His only Son. The ultimate sacrifice. Yes. Why? Because God is holy. 
you know, in, in, in His holiness, He cannot tolerate sin. Remember this. Oh, I thought God is love. Yes, God is love. What, the, what is the parallel or the opposite of love? Wrath. So if you say God's love is infinite, God's judgment, God's justice, God's wrath is infinite also. Wow. Imagine that. So you do not belong to the love of God. You are in the wrath of God. <laughs> okay. Can you read the John chapter 3, 36? Remember this, friends. Just before we pray the prayer of salvation. John 3, 36. Can you read that one? Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Uh -huh. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains in him. Yes. So, you are under the wrath of God for as long as you refuse the gospel of Christ. As long as you reject Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are under the wrath of God. So, it's your choice, life or death. If you choose life, you pray with us. Okay? So choose life. Choose life. <laughs> choose life. Our God uh, is a God, is pro-life. Alright? <laughs> the God, the, the, the God of this age, uh, of the world, which is the devil, Satan, you know, he, he loves death. Why? That is, that is something that thrills him. <laughs> The Bible, John 10, 10 says, the thief or Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So yeah. that is the signature of Satan. If you belong to a religion that is more of kill, steal, and destroy, that's the devil you're serving. Yeah. So you must think right now. Because the God, the real God of Israel is so unique. He's, there's no other like him. He's the one true and living God, the God of Israel. His name is uh, Yahweh Adonai Elohim and he said in Isaiah that is my name that is my name so no longer a rank but his name okay that so if you're not serving Yahweh if it's not Adonai Elohim if it's not the God of Israel if it's not the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you're not serving the right God okay so again if you want to give your life to Jesus, let us pray this prayer right now. Okay? Pray after me. Say, Father in heaven. Father in heaven. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray. I pray. I believe. I believe. That Jesus died in the cross. That Jesus died in the cross. To pay for my sins. To pay for my sins. And that He rose from the dead. And that He rose from the dead. On the third day. On the third day. I confess. I confess. That I am a sinner. That I am a sinner. And I cannot save myself. And I cannot save myself. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And cleanse me. And cleanse me. With the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. Today. Today, I entrust my life. I entrust my life to Jesus. To Jesus, as my personal Lord, as my personal and Lord, only Savior, and only Savior. Amen. 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 So praise the Lord, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And for those of you who pray that prayer sincerely from your heart, welcome to the family of God. This is yes. This is just the beginning of your journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, there will be more. And uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7 says, So then, just as you receive, you accepted Christ Jesus as Lord. Christ means Savior. Savior Jesus as Lord. It says, continue. Okay? Yeah. Continue to live your lives in Him. Mm. Next, verse 7. Rooted and built up in Him. Um, strengthened in the faith it's as you were taught. taught and overflowing with thankfulness. No, so the thing is this, there's going to be a lot of things to learn. You will be taught uh, in the Word of God because this is part of your spiritual growth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Along with your spiritual growth is your emotional, your everything. Okay? So, it's very important that you join a Bible study group. We call it the this means discovery Bible study. Why? Because in a discovery Bible study, 
everyone learns as a group yep. okay so you you you, you kind of read it everyone reads a portion of scripture and everyone shares their thoughts okay so isn't that exciting okay so we have a, the we recommend the first four uh, series first four modules okay each module have at least 10 okay sometimes 14 but it, mm, it, it depends. depends okay but uh, technically uh, by standard we we try to uh, sum it up with 10 lessons okay yeah so the first series discovering god second discovering christ that's christology and then discovering the holy spirit and then discovering spiritual family mm -hmm. so i hope that you can you know contact us if you want to open one in your house you want to host this dbs because uh, now that you believe and receive jesus as your lord and savior you need to grow yeah okay like plants plants need to grow first before they can bear fruit so do you yes <laughs> so uh, i think uh, that's it yeah anything son um well you know talking about dbs i yeah. just wanna you know share that it's really effective it's really easy and you don't have to be a pastor or a bible right. uh school graduate uh, you don't have to be any of those amazing roles that you can be mm -hmm. um or, well we'll just supply you the, the verses and the uh, you know it's very easy and very basic yes and um, all they need to do is facilitate right? and yeah and if you want to learn more follow this page because sometimes our if you live in Davao City this is a treat that mm. Guya Vidal or any other leader will facilitate a, a training on how you can be a facilita facilitator and an effective one. Yeah. So I, I've been one myself, my wife is too, we've yeah. been facilitating uh, and and we're still staying strong. We're in the Discovering Spiritual Family series already mm. and I'm telling you, um, um, everyone learns yes even us <laughs> yes so the fact that it's amazing the, the, your your group your dbs has continued ever since before Years? the pandemic yeah yeah even before the pandemic and they're still there go growing uh, strong that means to say it's exciting you know that, it's something that tells a lot about how dbs is engaging mm. Right. You will learn from someone that doesn't even really read the Bible, but when he reads it or she reads it, and then they will discuss your their thoughts about it. Uh -huh. You'd be amazed with what you can <laughs> hear. That's right. So I'm telling you, uh, we're all telling you that DBS is going to be fun, and we want you to be a part of it. And we hope this is something that God steers in your heart. Yes. And and you don't need to be attending, you know, our church to apply DBS. In mm -hmm. fact. We will offer DBS to any pastors, you know, to any uh, leaders, uh, denominational leaders who are interested. Wow. Okay, we can share with you the materials, you know, the the training, very easy. Or even I'm willing to send our pastor oh. uh, to you guys, our <laughs> leaders, to 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 teach your group how to start uh, DBS. Okay, why not? So just. Just send us a message on yeah. this page uh, and also make sure you follow so mm -hmm. you won't miss out yeah <laughs> right so amazing that's all for now and i hope you're blessed and uh, don't forget again uh, to uh, uh, click the share button right and uh right now uh, we need to wrap up so we can go to church okay so yeah. god bless you all let's pray father we thank you we pray that everyone who just gave their lives to Jesus will continue to grow. They will find the right church and the right group, uh, study group. Uh, and then also, we pray that they will also bear fruit. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Bless all of us as we close. Uh, and now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you His peace both now and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. So God bless you all and I'll see you again next week. Okay? Bye.